today's video was sponsored by John Mungai, a true patriot and a Kenyan nationalist at heart. Word of advice, if you are a friend to a married man, and under peculiar circumstances, this same man ends up undergoing a divorce, either initiated by his wife or he himself. Never ever join that man in insulting his ex-wife. He might tolerate your insolence while he is bitter and wallowing in anger. But this anger evidently does not last forever. One day this man will forgive the ex-wife for the things she did, or she will forgive him for the things he did, and when they end up together, guess who becomes the common enemy? You. Now here's the truth that many will have a hard time swallowing. Ruto doing a handshake with Uru Kenyatta is only temporarily impossible because of some five hardliners surrounding the president. They are not that many. It's just around five if I do my math correctly. And I want to state categorically that William Ruto and Uru Kenyatta are going to work together eventually. It is not a matter of if, it is a matter of when. And so I want to caution the leaders who are jumping on the bandwagon of attacking Uru Kenyatta just because it is trending. And also because President Ruto tolerates it and resonates with that message today. One day President Ruto will wake up and he will forget all the things Uru Kenyatta did to him and he will remember all the things that Uru Kenyatta did for him. And when that day comes, those who are attacking Uru Kenyatta, if they are still doing it at the time and no one knows when that time will be, President Ruto is the one who will mold them. Those who listened very closely to President-elect William Ruto after it became apparent that he is the next commander-in-chief prior to being sworn in, what did he say while he was at the Bombers of Kenya? He said that as at now, he is the big brother of Uru Kenyatta. Then right after that, we saw Uru Kenyatta receiving Ruto at State House. They had a tete-a-tete. -tete. And during the inauguration, many leaders were blindsided. Ruto surprised everyone when he came on stage and read a different script. I remember Rigathi went on a tirade against Uru Kenyatta, but when it was time for Ruto, he did none of that. Instead, he said he has talked to Uru Kenyatta and he'll continue his duties as a peace envoy in several nations. Then on top of that, with all this maandamano you are seeing in Kenya, in Kisumu, in Migori, in Madhari, in Nairobi, in wherever, it is common knowledge that Uru Kenyatta is a key financier of all these activities. It is his money that is doing these misdeeds. But never ever has President Ruto ever considered firing Uru Kenyatta from his roles representing Kenya abroad in peacekeeping missions. Yet there are several hardliners around Ruto who I have seen personally, Silvana Sosoro being one of them, saying that President Ruto should fire Uru Kenyatta from going outside this country on peace matters when he's the orchestrator of violence inside Kenya. But as we all know, that kind of directive fell on deaf ears. President Ruto will not honor such a thing. Now in this video I want us to look into why President William Ruto is likely to end all hostilities with Uru Kenyatta and vice versa and the two are likely to work together again. But before we get into that, if you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button and if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Ofula, hit the subscribe button, you're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really really need to subscribe to. Now the first reason why Ruto is likely to work with Uru Kenyatta. In a recent interview, Uru Kenyatta not only admitted that President Ruto is the president of Kenya, but that he is also his president. Basically saying, I agree, you are the president of Kenya, something that he's had a hard time doing before. In fact, he was in Kisumu during the, what, funeral of Magoha. It wasn't Kisumu, but somewhere in Luonyanza, where Uru said that Raila is his president. Now he's saying Ruto is his president. On top of that, Uru Kenyatta in that same interview said that if Ruto calls him, he will go. That is a break of protocol. Usually it is the sitting head of state who will go visit the former head of state. Never the other way around. Not in Kenya at least. We saw Ruto and Uru visiting Mze Moi. We saw them visiting Kibaki. We saw even Kibaki visiting Moi and so on and so forth. It's never the one who is outside power visiting the one in power. It is the other way around. It is how you pay respect to the one who has served before you. Now based on what Uru Kenyatta said that if he is called he will go. I will not be shocked one of these days when we all turn on the news and we see President William Ruto and all his glory, all the 50, 70 vehicles and all his CSS and whoever at the doorstep of Uru Kenyatta going to give him a courtesy call. I'm sure we've all seen videos of Uru Kenyatta when he was president visiting Ruto at his office.
What do you think will stop Ruto from visiting Uru Kenyatta? He got that message. Uru is saying, if you call me, I will come. But he knows that that is not protocol. It is Ruto to go see him. And I will not be shocked to see Ruto going to see him. Because he can see the man has hit rock bottom. His candidate lost. Brookside has lost business, 75% of the Kenyan market. The man has finally agreed to meet with Ruto. And he's saying that Ruto is his president. That seriously appeals to Ruto. It might not appeal to those around him. But to the president, trust me, it does. Now, the second reason why Ruto is likely to work with Uru Kenyatta once more is the fact that he needs the Mount Kenya votes. Uru Kenyatta single-handedly last election supported Raila Odinga and in so doing diverted 1.2 million votes from Mount Kenya to Raila Odinga. He was so close from sending William Ruto home to lick his wounds. The difference between the two candidates was 200,000 and something. So Ruto needs that 1.2 which was lost to be locked down this time around. How is he going to do that? But at the very least working with Uru Kenyatta or having Uru Kenyatta just stand down and stay away from politics because either way he'll have done them a favor but by staying active and supporting Raila and so on and so forth it creates a lot of problems for this current administration. If Uru Kenyatta was a retired Luya or a retired Masai or some other community which is not Kalenjin or Kikuyu they'd have no problem with him but as of now he's giving them a lot of logistical nightmares as far as votes are concerned. And the third reason why Ruto is likely to work with Uru Kenyatta is because deep down he knows he would never never ever have become president of this republic without Uru Kenyatta. Their futures were always woven together. If Uru could not make it, Ruto would never have made it. Ruto rode on Uru Kenyatta's successes until it was time for him to take over. Here's what I mean. I'm not trying to say that Ruto did not contribute anything and that he was being carried all along by Uhuru. But as far as legitimacy is concerned, Uhuru did defer some of that legitimacy to William Ruto. Why do I say this? Uru Kenyatta is a very senior politician in this country. Senior in the sense that in 2002, when Moi was not going to be in the ballot for the first time, who did he turn to to represent the government of the day, Kanu? It was Uhuru Mwigai Kenyatta. Uhuru got the privilege of contesting against Moi Kibaki. Not Raila, not anybody else. That is a very, very great honor. Again, as we approached 2013, Uru Kenyatta was a former presidential candidate in 202 against Moi Kibaki. Again, he's the son of the first president of the republic, so he was the obvious choice. People would have trusted the brand of Uru Kenyatta over William Ruto at the time. So Ruto laid back. He was his deputy, but he was preparing himself to take over from Uru Kenyatta. And those are not just my words. Those are the words of the current president of this administration. Just listen to this. Nilikuambia hii siasa peleka namna hii polepole usifanye sana namna ile itaharibika. Unaona mimi nakaa nyuma ya Uru Kenyatta na jipanga hapo polepole polepole polepole. I know what I'm doing my friend. Unafikiri nikilete fujo kwa huyu jamaa ata ata <laughs> Ala? Eh yeah, my friend tuendelee namna hiyo. Eh yeah. na tumesoma kutoka historia. Tumesoma kutoka historia. Hata nyaye walikaa nyumba nyuma ya baba ya huyu jamaa akakuwa kitu. Eh. Huyu rafiki yangu mwingine alikuja akalete fujo hapo kwa kibaki sasa yeye hako msituni. So tujipange mzuri. Maneno ita, itaendelea namna hiyo. Tumekubaliana. So Ruto knows that without Uru Kenyatta there is no president William Ruto. The other way around is not true. Without William Ruto, Uru Kenyatta could have still become president, even if he was deputized by Musale Mudavadi. So for me, these two gentlemen have a very great history, and no one can block them from working together. They might do it temporarily, but eventually, it will become unpopular. And when it becomes unpopular for the president, or when he becomes tired of listening to people attacking his former boss or friend, that is when Kitawaramba, some of these leaders. But as usual, guys, that's just my opinion. Do drop me your own comments in the comment section below. I'll do my best to read them and to give you a response. Now, in the event you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Wafula. Hit the subscribe button, you're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. Alright guys, adios. Thank you for choosing David Wafula as your primary news platform. We put countless hours in research, recording, and editing. 
by showing up each and every day to watch our videos. You encourage us to generate more videos for the viewers. We are on a mission to inform, educate, and build a better tomorrow. To our thousands of followers in a world full of presidents, kings, and queens, you are the real gem. Adios.